Grounded 1.0 is officially out now and there's a ton of new players getting into the game for the very first time. Which is why I'm here with a brand new list of tips and tricks that are guaranteed to help you out during your adventure. So whether you're a new player to the game or a returning player trying to get back into the grounded grind, this video is here to help guide you on your brand new grounded journey. I'm Tiny Pirate Gaming. what up? And these are 10 grounded tips and tricks for new players. Number 10. Analyzers. These microscope looking gizmo gadgets can be found in every field station and laboratory around the backyard, and you're going to want to visit them anytime that you discover a new resource in the game. Resources in your inventory that have not been analyzed will be marked in the corner of their icon with a red, blue, or purple exclamation point, which indicates their rarity level, with red being common and purple being rare. Analyzing new resources allows you to learn new crafting and building recipes, rewards a minimal amount of raw science, and raises your brain power level which unlocks new weapon and armor crafting options. Another reason you'll want to analyze often is because certain building recipes such as grass walls, dew collectors, bounce webs, and more can only be unlocked by analyzing specific resources. And just in case you're wondering, you'll need to use web fiber in a spinning wheel to make silk rope which then needs to be analyzed to unlock the highly coveted dew collector survival utility. And if you're starting a new game, I highly recommend analyzing plant fiber, a pebblet, and crude rope first to quickly unlock most of the tier 1 weapons and tools. Getting these survival necessities crafted as quickly as possible can help you start the early grind for more valuable resources and boost your ability to bash some of the lower yard bugs. Number 9. But maybe you're not a basher. Maybe you prefer to run away. Well, not to worry because this next tip is designed with your playstyle in mind. Because if you want to have the speed required to slip past the pursuit of a persistent spider, then you'll want to craft a set of aphid slippers as soon as possible. You can unlock the recipe to craft these shrunken survival speedster skates by analyzing some raw aphid meat. You'll also need a workbench which you can build using 3 grass planks, 4 sprigs, and 2 sap. And you'll need to gather 2 raw aphid meats and 10 mite fuzzes to actually craft the slippers. Aphids can be found roaming basically everywhere around the yard and during the first portion of the game's story quest, you'll encounter a small cave full of mites that should reward you with enough fuzzes to craft the speedy slippers. Wearing the aphid slippers enables the status effect, the quickness, which will significantly boost your run speed allowing you to save time while traversing the yard and can potentially help you escape from problematic creatures that you may not be able to contend with yet. Number 8 Don't forget to grab a dandelion tuft. Serving as the only glide option available in the game, the dandelion tuft will allow you to glide safely down from elevated positions and will be required to complete certain platforming puzzles that you'll encounter throughout the game. You can get a dandelion tuft by chopping down, well, a dandelion. But not the yellow ones because they will only drop pollen. Also, don't forget to equip it. Number 7 Let's discuss the respawn rules, because those are important to understand if you want to avoid the frustration of having to trek across the entire yard to retrieve your dropped backpack. When you are defeated, you'll be given the option to respawn, or to respawn at the kid's cave. Choosing to respawn in the kid's cave will spawn you in at the starting point of the game, which is roughly located in the center of the lower yard. Simple enough. But if you choose to respawn, one of two things can happen. If you've used a lean-to or a bed to reset your respawn point, then the respawn option will spawn you at your set position. However, if you do not have your respawn point set, then you'll respawn at the nearest discovered field station, and since these science pods are located all around the map, it means that this option is most likely going to bring you back closer to your fallen backpack, assuming you've discovered the nearest field station. For this reason, I suggest not setting your respawn point to a bed or a lean-to unless you're using them strategically as a fallback position while exploring a specific area. This way, whenever you're defeated, you'll be able to respawn closer to your dropped bag, which will save you time during retrieval, assuming, again, that you've discovered the nearest field station. Number 6 Did you know that the roasts not only fill your hunger meter, but will also quickly restore a large chunk of your health? 
Well, now you do, and during the early portions of the game, prior to unlocking the smoothie station, roasts are going to be your only option to rapidly replenish your HP during combat. So whether you're starting a fresh world or are new to the game, be sure to build a roasting spit early using four peblets, three sprigs, and three dry grass chunks, and stock up on some roasts to be used for hunger and health in the event of an emergency. Number 5 when building with grass planks or weed stems, you can save yourself some time by using the move feature to relocate pallets from harvesting sites to construction sites quickly. This technique works with both grass and stem pallets and can also be used with other build items for base building flexibility. Number 4 While exploring the yard, you'll want to keep an eye out for raw science orbs. These orbs won't show up until after you've activated the Mysterious Machine during the game's introductory story missions, but after that point you'll be able to find them practically all over the place. In fact, right after you've witnessed the cutscene you can find one in the small flooded hole next to the Mysterious Machine, another one next to a rock close to the first field station, and another one on top of the straw of the Tropicop Puncho juice box, which will require some grasshopping platforming or building to retrieve. There's also a bunch scattered around the oak lab when you get there, so be sure to search around the lab and grab it because you're going to need it. Raw science is used in the ASL or Advanced System Library to purchase new crafting recipes, unlock new mutations, and access beacon locators for your scabby to locate some of the other collectibles around the yard, such as milk molars and more raw science. Number 3 if the idea of facing off against stink bugs, ladybugs, or spiders with only tier 1 gear sounds too difficult for you, well then you're in luck, because many of the resources needed to craft tier 2 gear can also be obtained without actually defeating those creatures. You can do this by breaking open spider web sacks which have a chance to drop valuable hard to get resources like ladybug heads, stink bug parts, and boiling glands. This will also reward you with web fiber which is needed to craft silk rope. And the only downside is, well, they're usually found around lots of spiders, and when you break them open, they also drop a random number of spiderlings that will immediately attack you. So, good luck. Number 2. Take advantage of the peeper feature. Not only is it necessary to complete all of the game's achievements and unlock one of the mutations, but doing so will also unlock a creature card in the data tab of your menu that displays a bunch of useful information, such as the creature's health bar size, its weaknesses and strengths, the types of resources it drops, and also keeps count of how many you've defeated during your adventures. And if you kill a creature before peeping it, don't worry because your peepiness still works on the remains of defeated enemies, just remember not to harvest them before you do your peeping. And also remember that if you're a fan of grounded themed, grounded related content presented in tutorial format, then you've found the right channel because that's basically all that I do here, and if that interests you, then defeat the like button with a sweet knife kick, and I hope that this video earned your subscription today. Number 1 At nighttime, the gnats will gather around the lamps in the yard. If you climb up onto the lights, then you can easily farm them for gnat meat and gnat fuzzes, and since they're so easy to defeat, you can use this method to quickly unlock and upgrade mutations like Lil Fist, Chopper, Smasher, and more. And there you go, 10 tips and tricks that every new player in Grounded should know about. Hopefully some of these help you out in your shrunken survival adventures around the backyard. And if you know any other tips or tricks for Grounded, then let me know about them in the comments below. You can also follow me on Twitch for live streams, Twitter for channel news, and join the Tiny Pirate Gaming Discord for discussions on Grounded gaming, content creation, and more, along with me and the rest of the hashtag Tiny Crew. So whether I see you here in the comments, over on the Twitch sphere, or someplace else across the streamiverse, just know that I appreciate all of your support and thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Arm lady, watch your step. There be a tiny pirate here.